The sun is shining, but I'm absolutely freezing. I have concrete floors in my studio, so it's literally cooling my feet from below. So I feel like a little icicle, so yeah. I know that I said last month that I will only be posting once a month, but then I kind of had my glaze testers come out of the kiln and I got really excited because they look absolutely amazing. And I was like, I think I should take time and share a whole video just on my glaze testers, kind of explaining my process and what I've been doing so that the next video is not an hour long. If you guys have watched some of my previous videos, you'll remember that I did tiny glaze testers that I made all the same. I 3D printed them, made them all the same size, all the same layer heights because I wanted to kind of test the different glazes and see how they run and fall and form on the mini testers so that when I pick and choose colors for the vases that I want to sell and for the other forms that I'm creating, I kind of know what to expect from the glazes. Some of them came out really good. Some of them not so much. And I did do some colors that I wouldn't usually glaze because these testers I also want to use for the workshops and for demos so when people come they can kind of pick the glaze color that they like and what I like might not necessarily be what someone else likes so I need to kind of make sure that I have enough glaze testers to kind of cover everyone's taste. Now in pottery I've always put potters in three types of categories. Now guys I'm generalizing please just be kind to me in the comments just bear with me. So potter number one they love glazing. They live for glazing. They love experimenting with glazes. They love adding things to glazes. They love changing the formulas to glazes, which usually means stuff explodes in the kiln. And they just love the whole process. Then you have potter number two. They hate glazing. They hate the process of glazing. They don't want to get their fingers dirty. They're more interested in creating their forms and, you know, working with the clay. I'm not saying potter number one doesn't like working with clay and working with forms. I'm just saying potter number two just pretty much hates glazing and everything about glazing. And generally, if they don't have to glaze anything, they won't. Um, and glazing is kind of just a byproduct that they do because people ask them to do it. And then you have potter number three. And I kind of fall in that category. I enjoy glazing, but I don't experiment to the extent where I have stuff exploding in the kill and yeah, I kind of stick to what I know and then kind of push the limits a little, but not really. And I really enjoy the color of the clay. I don't always like to overpopulate the clay with too much glaze. I kind of like to show off the clay on its own, the stoneware clay that I really love using. And I also love to paint with underglazes. So that also creates another layer of color on my clay. So I'm kind of between both worlds. So when it comes to glaze testing, I kind of have like mixed emotions because it's a really long process. You need to think of what colors you want to do when you're testing. How many testers do you have? For example, I thought I printed 20 testers. It turns out I can't count and I only printed 19. I'll be honest though, it was kind of late at night when I was doing those little tester prints. So I was obviously really tired in my defense. Now a good suggestion is not to go out and buy all the different color glazes that you'd like to test. Maybe go to a working studio that already has pre-mixed glazes and then do your testers there. It's just a lot more cost effective because you may buy a glaze, absolutely hate it, and then it's pretty much just gonna stand in your studio and stare at you for years going, please use me, please use me. I have some of those. I've never used them. They're literally just standing there and I'm just like, mm-mm, mm-mm, not gonna use you, sorry. Um, so just bear that in mind. When I do all of my glaze testing, I actually go to another studio. They have tons of glazes. They have the tester tiles on the wall. I can kind of see the different colors because I don't own all those different colors and I don't want to buy hundreds of colors that I'm never going to use. And then I can see in the future which glazes sell more and then those I can purchase. So here's my sheet. On my sheet, I've got the number of my tester. For example, the numbers at the bottom. This is number 12. So have a system. You need to have a system in place because if you don't number your glazes and you don't put them down, you're not going to remember. Trust me. I've done it for years. I remember the first time I did glaze testing. Did I add numbers? No. Did I have any idea what was going on? No. 
This one is manganese oxide underneath transparent glaze. And I really love the effect that you can see it going into the coil lines. Oh, it makes me so happy. And if we compare it to the first one, you can see underneath the transparent glaze, the manganese oxide is a lot brighter and oh, the effects for both are actually quite cool. So I really, really like these. Bye, bye. And we have the next pair. First up is cobalt oxide. So this doesn't have any glaze. It kind of reminds me of jeans, stained jeans. The color, I really like it. And then his friend, hello. This is cobalt under transparent and you can see the difference as well with the cobalt oxide and how here it's a lot more navy and here it's a bit more turquoise. I was really disappointed with this one actually. This is iron oxide but I didn't put a lot of iron oxide in because iron goes black underneath transparent glaze and I was scared it would come out too dark. And in being scared to put on too much, I put on too little. I mean, it's there. You can see the, the different lines, the coil lines that the 3D printer has made. I don't know, they're not super defined for me. So I'm going to have to do it again and maybe do it a little bit darker. This one was soft pink with cobalt. And surprisingly, I thought I made the soft pink quite thin which does show because it looks more white than pink, but the effect was really nice. So I may have to do this one again because if someone from the workshop does choose this color, they may think it's white and it may come out pink. So I may have to just test this one again and make the glaze a bit thicker just to get a little bit of consistency. If you don't trust the glaze and you feel that there may have been something that has gone wrong, trust your gut and just do another taster. Uh, because if you're working for clients that want specific colors and it comes out the wrong color, you're going to have to do it again and you don't want to waste money. This one doesn't have any oxides. This is Jade and I made it really thin so I could try and see the lines. Some of these I actually wrote down how long I dipped them. So I would put their thin glaze, dip for three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, depending on the thickness of the glaze and how I thought um, the glaze would react and take. So always write that down because next time the glaze may be a bit thinner or thicker and you dip it too long or too short and you might not get the same effect. So it's all about learning the different glazes and feeling the thickness of the glazes and kind of going with your gut. I'm not really a person who likes to use red, but I did a few red ones. So this is paprika. And paprika, this one actually showed off the little imperfections in the clay quite nicely. I don't know if you guys can see. Next, we've got Scarlet. She's a beauty. The glaze is a little bit thicker, but I like the color. You can definitely see the lines there with the, the glaze, with the, the light shining on it. And the last one, this is Plum. I really like this one. It's a lot thicker than the others, I think. Let me put them on my fingers. Let's have a look. Let's compare. You've got the paprika, the scarlet, and the plum. Now the paprika shows off the lines a lot more than the scarlet, and the plum looks a lot thicker than the other two. But in all honesty, when I dipped them, they were all kind of the same consistency in terms of thickness of the glaze. It just shows you the different glazes look differently once they've been dipped, because I dipped them all for three seconds. There are some colors that I'm not really a big fan of and one of them would be navy. It's not my favorite color when I'm dipping with glazes and when I did this one I accidentally made a mistake so I had to wipe the glaze off, let it stand in the sun so it would dry before I dipped it again because cool tip guys don't ever dip a wet pot in glaze. If you've made a mistake wipe it off, clean it off and let it dry because if you dip it in the glaze again it's not really going to dry fast and if you touch it, you can see there's imperfections on mine because I had to pick it up, obviously the glaze will come off. And then the forest green, you can see I actually had uneven dipping there at the top. It's a lot darker than the rest of it. But this one really shows off the lines quite nicely of the 3D print, so that's kind of cool. This is copper with transparent and I put the copper on quite thick. 
uh, before I dipped it, made sure it was really dry and I did a bit of shading to see what it would look like and it looked fabulous! Absolutely love this effect. With example there, there's an imperfection in the clay print and the oxide kind of accentuated a little and I love that kind of highlighting um, something that went wrong. I think the air pressure went up a bit and the layer is a little bit thicker than the others. That's why it's popping out a bit, but it kind of just gives it that handmade feel because technically you are working with the printer to create an artwork. So, you know, it's art. It's not always going to be perfect. And um, yeah, that's what the 3D printing process is all about. You working with your printer together to create art. This was a cool reaction. So this is copper underneath scarlet. It really came out well. This is another good example of oxides reacting differently because remember copper is actually green. So you obviously when you're doing oxides include shading. You don't have to do flat surfaces and because with oxides they go into the grooves and you can wipe the oxide away. But make sure you shade it and then it kind of gives a really nice effect. Now I'm not a big fan of pinks and purples but this one is pretty cool. This is amethyst with manganese oxide underneath and I think because the glaze is so thin I really like the color. Um, if it was super purple pinkish I probably wouldn't have liked it but because the glaze is a bit thinner uh, the oxide is more pronounced comes through quite well and shows off the lines of the 3D printer beautifully. Now we're getting to the gold. So this one is Steel green. Please forgive, it did crack. Before I bisked it, I must have bumped it or something and it had the crack when it came out of the bisque. And when I glazed it, I knew it was going to crack because what happens in the kiln if something is cracked and you glaze it and it goes back in the kiln, the crack just gets bigger. So I knew it would split and I was kind of hoping it would hold its shape. It totally did. This is a steel green with manganese oxide. It's given it a really interesting effect here in the middle very metallic shows it off quite nicely and these are the colors that i really tend to gravitate towards and now we're on to like my favorite favorite of all this is duck egg with manganese oxide the duck egg is almost like a baby blue but it's not really a baby blue it's between a baby blue and a turquoise and it's just with a little bit of white in there it's just an interesting color and the manganese oxide has just taken so nicely and kind of looks like there's a interesting effect because it looks like the manganese oxide wanted to run but didn't run. But on this side, with the imperfection in the clay, you can see the glaze didn't take to one part of the pot. But that's a really, really nice effect there. And then usually with glaze testing, there's always that one that's kind of like leaves a question mark in your brain where you're like, did I really dip it in that color? For example, this. This is supposed to be blue jeans. So this is what blue jeans is supposed to look like, the one at the top. And if we compare, they really do not look the same. So it's a bit of a conundrum what this is. We had a bit of a debate at the studio going over what we think it is. And we came to the conclusion that none of us were right and none of us could figure out what glaze this is. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to do a few more testers and dip blue jeans again because this is definitely not blue jeans. Talking about tester tiles, I have tons. I've actually got here behind me. So I'll show you some tiles that have actually gone wrong. This tile is actually one that I did for underglaze testing. So underneath this, this is actually black underglaze and on top, it's supposed to be earthenware transparent. But as you can see, something went wrong. You can't see the black underneath the transparent at all. It's kind of like a misty gray, gross color. It just, something went wrong with the earthenware glaze. Let me just compare it quickly. So this is the one I just had, and this is black uh, with transparent glaze, but this is um, transparent stoneware glaze. And you can see the difference in how the black came out. <laughs> with the two and this one is actually supposed to look like this one. This is another example of complete disaster. So I don't know what happened here and with glaze, if it's not mixed properly, number one on this side, you can see I was still learning how to glaze when I did these to be honest, so just bear with me. Um, the glaze wasn't mixed properly. 
and it had some funky reactions. So when it went into the kiln, the glaze kind of t uh, started to pull away from the actual tile, creating this like cracking effect. And yes, it looks really funky and it looks amazing. I really like that effect, but if you're trying to do it for like food, that's not gonna work. You can't eat of something where you're gonna like eat a piece of glaze, you know, while you're trying to eat your pasta. Love pasta. Um, but you can't eat off something like this at all. You'll just poison yourself. It's really not a good idea. I hope some of the tips I've given you guys today will help you guys with your own pots and your own 3D prints. So create your own 3D mini tasters, make them the same size or do them different, whatever works for you. But just keep in mind that if you're doing glaze tasting, don't always have smooth surfaces. Make like ribbed surfaces so that you can see what the effect is of the glaze and how it falls down. So you can definitely see how the different glazes react. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me guys. And I hope to see you guys at the end of the month. I'll be showing you some of my 3D printed vases that I painted with underglazes. And there's a big difference in the underglaze color when it comes out of the kiln for bisque. And once you've dipped it in the transparent glaze and what it looks like. So I'll show you guys the different colors and how much more it pops once you've added a glaze to it and just chat to you guys about the techniques that I use and give you some tips with that. So if you want to move forward with some of your prints and your pottery and learn more about decorating, please join me at the end of the month. Hope you guys have a good week. Bye.